Grace and peace to you and welcome, friends. My name is Brett Swanson, pastor of Wauwatosa Presbyterian Church, and I come to you on this All Saints Sunday from the comfort of my own home here in Wauwatosa to worship with you, to break bread together for all the saints. This is All Saints Sunday, and so I say our welcomes. Indeed, all are welcome to worship with us now and always. All of the saints, all the world around, are invited to break bread together with us. I say a special welcome to those family members who have lost loved ones in this past year, who seek to celebrate their life and legacy with us today. You are most welcome, as well as those who are worshiping with us over our Worship by Phone feature. You can call the number on your screen to hear a lot, hear a audio recording of this exact service uh, at any point, simply over your phone. I hope that those of you who are able will pass this on to loved ones who may um, be sad that they can't worship with their community due to limitations with internet or the like. Now, I do have an announcement that today being November 1st, All Saints Sunday would have been our All Saints Communion drive through but that event has been canceled out of safety concerns. I apologize for the inconvenience that this may cause. But Wisconsin, as you know, is experiencing incredible highs in the rate of COVID transmission in our communities. And uh, my family has not been immune. And so out of the abundance of caution and modeling well-being for each and every one, we will uh, suspend and cancel this event for today and hope that we can do something down the road. I appreciate your grace, and your patience. As we look forward into the week that is to come, we have our Commitment Sunday celebration next Sunday, November 8th, an opportunity for you to turn in and give your prayerfully discerned uh, gift, estimate of giving for the next calendar year. I'm thankful for all of you who have given so generously during this uh, time of separation from our usual goings on, but I Thank you and challenging you, challenge you to consider to give generously in the next year as well, for it remains a mystery to many of us. But we know that we will be back together when we can and when it's safe. Until then, you're invited to give online. You're, enti- you're invited to uh, send your gifts in, as many of you have. Thank you to the church office. November 8th is also our Deacon's Virtual Coffee Hour, which will take place over Zoom. And you can sign up today. This is the final day to sign up so that we can get you some coffee, so we can break bread together, pour a hot steaming cup of joe, and fellowship with one another over Zoom. If you have any questions or to sign up, contact the church office Monday morning at the very latest. I want to give a special shout out to the amazing things that our Sunday school classes are doing online. Thanks to Ann Cowling and her exciting and awesome band of teachers. They have used technology and some resources and some just general awesomeness to create a great at-home Sunday school program. So sign up with the church office. We'd hate for you to miss out on the season that's to come up with Advent. It's going to be a blast. We've got uh, our adult Bible study that takes place Wednesdays at 10 a.m. We've been looking at uh, those folks who are part of our Better Together life, that we are in fact better knit and stitched together, as we will hear today from our hidden figure, uh, Tabitha, who in fact was a seamstress. But we are brought along life's journey. We're shepherded by those who walk with us. And so I hope that you'll explore with us on Wednesdays at 10 a.m. those people who stand out as examples of the kinds of folks that we need in our life as we go about through our daily lives. Well, friends, there's just so much going on in the life of the church right now. I invite you to check out the announcements that are part of the weekly email and to look at our church website for more information. You'll see a lot more of it coming up in our November newsletter. Well, friends, this truly is an All Saints Celebration Day. I come to you from my home that's absolutely filled with the memories of saints for those who have given us something so that we can be where we are today. We consider what we give to one another and the lasting gifts of charity and love. Friends, let us worship God. Let us pray. Timeless God, 
We thank you for all those before us who have kept the faith to the end. We thank you for the brave souls of deathless fame, and also for those whose names are remembered only by you. Give us wisdom to understand your will, and courage to live as your people in this day. Through the grace of Jesus Christ, amen. Our scripture reading for today comes from Acts 9:36 through 42. Now in Joppa there was a disciple whose name was Tabitha, which in Greek is Dorcas. She was devoted to good works and acts of charity. At that time she became ill and died. When they washed her, they laid her in a room upstairs. Since Lydda was near Joppa, the disciples who heard that Peter was there sent two men to him with the request, Please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with them, and when he arrived, they took him to the room upstairs. All the widows stood beside him, weeping and showing tunics and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter put all of them outside, and then he knelt down and prayed. He turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. Then she opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand and helped her up. Then calling the saints and widows, he showed her to be alive. This became known throughout Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. I feel a little bit like Mr. Rogers on my couch. If I had a cardigan, I could change it in two swap out my shoes. I'd almost be there, almost, almost. It takes a little bit more than just cardigans and shoes to be Mr. Rogers, of course. Legacies like Mr. Rogers are things that you have to aspire to. I hear that in our scripture today, Tabitha. In Greek, it, her name is Dorcas, which I have to admit gave me a little giggle the first time I heard it. But she has a legacy, and it's why the widows and all the town have gathered in her passing. On All Saints Sunday, a day like today, when we celebrate those who've gone before us, we hear a story today of someone whose life touched so very many people in a way probably, probably that Dorcas, that Tabitha, maybe could not have anticipated. Who would have thought? Would she have thought that when her passing did come, the town would turn out? And all of those who were given garments made by her own hands would wear them to her service, to her funeral, to in her mourning. That kind of legacy is not something that you can simply achieve with a needle and thread, but it comes from within. You know, it seems by reading this that Tabitha was a bit like the fabric that held the 
community together. To use the metaphor of the seamstress, she stitched these folks together. The story is about her, but only thinly. Because what I hear in the story, if we take away, if we lift out the idea that she is resurrected by Peter's divine power, that what I hear in the story is what Tabitha does to the community that now mourns her, that now embraces her. Tabitha gave these people, these women, these widows, a gift that they literally wear on the shoulders that literally keeps them warm at night. I'm reminded of the gifts that we pass down to each other, down the family tree, that maybe at the time you wouldn't think would be the case. My entire house practically is a testament to the things that we've been given. Over here are bookshelves made for Kate by a loving neighbor. Right over there is a piece of art that was handed down to us. This vase right here belonged to Kate's grandfather. It's Blinko glass, native to West Virginia, where Kate is from. The whole family prizes Blinko glass, and this is a peculiar color for it. But there it sits. It was once his and now given to us. I wonder if it will be Zoe's one day. I wonder what of this will be Zoe's one day. Will she choose to keep this couch? We might give it to her before we pass away. Will she choose to keep the picture of Kate and my engagement? Will she choose to keep the art that we had framed of hers? We don't know. What we do know is if we act charitably now, the things that we give, the things that we offer to each other, have a life, have a legacy that far outstrips our own. The gifts that we give to the church, the gifts that we give to one another, the gifts that your loved ones have given you, like a recipe passed down from generation to generation, like an article of clothing passed down from generation to generation, warms us, holds us, embraces us, protects us for years and years and years to come. I'm inspired by the giving history of this church, and I'm inspired that it didn't happen by accident, but, but it happened by the saints of Wauwatosa Presbyterian Church, who choose to act in charitable ways so that their work affects others, that their gifts affect others, that their lives affect others, and not simply for themselves. Tabitha's great lasting legacy, as we read about it in Acts, is that she's the only one in the entire scripture who's called a disciple and yet still a woman. They actually have to conjugate disciple differently for her. The good works that we do follow us and are passed down to us. They're passed down to me, and I'll pass these down to Zoe. I think about all of my house, maybe yours too, about what I can look at just here in the comfort of my living room and see the legacy of the saints who have come before. I know I see that at Wauwatosa Presbyterian, and I know you do too. I wanna to empower you on this All Saints Sunday to consider your legacy, to consider your life. Will we be a Tabitha who the good work that we do, we do literally are, keeps people warm, keeps people covered, stitches them together, or something else. Amen.
Friends, as we prepare to celebrate the Lord's Supper here on All Saints Sunday, I invite if you to, if you've not yet done so, to prepare your celebration as well. Whatever you have common among you is perfect. Somebody told me just the other day that they've enjoyed taking communion with Wheat Thins and Dr. Pepper. And we heard a story in seminary about Martin Luther King using grape Kool-Aid and a simple roll. You can do whatever is best for you. Because on that first night, Christ took what was common among that upper room and consecrated it. And we do the same. Today, we celebrate with a loaf of bread through a recipe given to us by Julie Guckenberg. She grew up eating this bread. Her mother made it to feed her family. And today, we use it to celebrate the Lord's Supper on a day when we remember the gifts that are passed down one to another. So friends, take a moment now to prepare your feast. that they will come from east and west and north and south, which is our story too. From wherever we are, whoever we are, we gather around this table to taste and see that the Lord is good. All who place their trust in Christ and all who seek to have now, here and today, but also for generations, done this very thing. They've come from different countries, spoke different languages, but had one truth that it was grace and love that unites us. This is what we celebrate this day and all of our days. But it's right before we break bread together that we pause and we pray. Friends, we come to this bittersweet ritual today filled with a bundle of emotions. While our gratitude for this family of faith is plentiful, our spiritual pain still may be suffocating us at five weeks, or four months, or three years, or even two decades after the death of our beloved. Our hearts know well of the gaping hole resulting from our loss. Even as this void still consumes this day-to-day -day living, we come here looking for hope that we can find only in you. Through this meal, we connect the past and present together, knowing that generation after generation has come to this table in their joy and grief. God, we pray that this feast be one that fills our souls with comfort. Even as winter is growing close and nighttime arrives early, this meal will kindle warmth and light inside our spirits. Holy Spirit, bless this bread and cup. May the Spirit bless us as we celebrate at the peaks of life and as we abide in the shadow-filled valleys. May the Spirit bring us the peace that will permeate our grief-coated hearts. And may the Spirit use this time and space to remind us that we are never alone in our difficult spaces. With his friends, Jesus shared his last communion before death. The group recognized the sacred in their gathering and celebrated their friendship and their community of faith. We express our gratitude for this meal, divine host. We give thanks for the times we spent with our loved ones here at this table. And we thank you that this table is a reminder of our love for you, God. Accompany us into the world with peace in our hearts and strength in the days to come. Amen. So it is, friends, Christ took the bread that he had there. And today we take the bread that we have here. A loaf passed down from generation to maybe now generations. Christ took the bread and he broke it and he gave it to the disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in much the same way, he took the cup filling it, saying, This is the cup of a new covenant, 
a cup sealed in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. And so it is, friends, that whenever we eat from this bread and we partake from this cup, we proclaim the saving death of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, until he comes again in all power and in all glory. Friends, this truly is the feast of God, the gifts of God for the people of God. So let us now break bread together. The body of Christ and the cup of salvation. Thanks be to God. Friends, will you pray with me as we go to God remembering the saints, past and present. Loving and faithful God, we give you thanks for the witness that brings us to this moment in our lives, the life of Christ, but the life of those seeking to live Christ-like. We give you thanks for all the saints of this congregation, past and present, and for our impact on the saints of the future. Give us good courage to be people of grace and love now and always. Remembering the saints calls us to remember those who are suffering. So we lift up those who are struggling under the enormous weight of life in this present hour. We remember those who have lost their lives to COVID and the family that they leave behind, a number growing each and every day. We remember those who've been victims of all kinds of violence, all kinds of disasters, both our own making and those that come by powers far beyond our own capability. We pray, O oh Lord, that you will call us to be your people, now and always, just as those who have been your people a time before. And so, O oh Lord, hear these names, your saints, ring out in our hearts as those who have gone before. For we're reminded of the words of the poet who says, no person is an island unto himself. Each is part of a continent, a part of the main. These are the saints who have been a part of our lives. We name them now. Lorraine Zabel. Lucille Exworth. Pat Detzer. Don Gunderson. Nan Braun. Mark Crump, Margaret Strobel, Jane Katsun, Laverne Charlson, Byron Fredrickson, the Reverend George Weinberg, Leslie Bauer. Betty Brown, Carol Tagg, Dave Jekyllek's father, the Reverend James Ray, Scott Linachek, and Marie Barrick. Each person's death diminishes me, writes the poet. For I am concerned, involved in humankind. Therefore, 
Ask not for whom the bell tolls. It tolls for you. Death be not proud. Though some have called you mighty and dreadful, yet you are not so. For those whom think that you can overthrow and die not poor death, for you cannot kill me. We lift up before you, O Lord, not just the saints who have gone before us, but the saints for whom we pray for now. We pray for Jay Costello and Virginia Doherty, Sandy and C.J. Dextater, Norma Fernhaber, the family of Byron Fredrickson, John Freed, Teresa Hoska, Jean Larsen, Pauline Kilhefner, John Tagg, Dave and Mary Roberts, Faith Rhodes, Jim Schwellweger, Roy Wetter, Jen Knapp's mother, and Petra Strife. We pray for those groups like Narcotics Anonymous unable to meet in this time, for those incarcerated, and for those whose prayers come to us through our community prayer box. We lift up our students, our medical professionals, and all those striving to bring about wholeness in this place. Your kingdom is a place of wholeness, and for it, O oh Lord, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Just one, Daddy. Just one? Yeah. Okay. Hey, friends, I brought my uh, assistant here. Zoe, you want to say hi to everybody? Hi. Hi. <laughs> For All Saints Day. Speaking of the things that are handed down to us, those things that we don't know hey, hey, when hey, they'll hey, be... It's, well, yeah, today's Halloween, but this is for tomorrow, too. That Do you know who made you this little jumper, this little outfit? No. No, your great-grandma, Nana, who made it for your mommy and her sisters, and now you have it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and today's Halloween. And today's Halloween. So, friends, you never know what we make can be passed down and can warm us and carry us into the future. So do you want to tell them to go in God's peace? Mm -mm. Do you want to go like this, two fingers up? Mm -mm. No, what do you want to say? Mm -mm. Nothing. Mm -mm. He say bye-bye? Bye. Bye. Friends, may the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit and the example of Jesus Christ, our risen Savior, be with you now and always, friends. Go in God's peace. Amen. <laughs>